Hello, my name is Jeffrey Hashem. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Ready Shred Capital Corp. Ready Shred Capital Corp is a issuing lister on the Toronto Venture Exchange. Uh, we've been uh, on the Toronto Venture Exchange since 2008. Uh, Ready Shred Capital Corp is uh, in the uh, information management business. Uh, we have three brands, ProShred, ProScan, Secure eCycle. And I look forward to walking you through uh, our story uh, and our opportunity uh, going forward. As noted, um, Ready Shred Capital Corp uh, is listed on the Toronto Venture Exchange. Um, uh, we've been on the Venture Exchange for uh, almost uh, 16 years now. Uh, our, our ticker symbol, stock symbol is KUT, uh, cut. Uh, we have 18.2 million shares outstanding. Um, our price uh, ranges in and around $4 a share uh, with a 52-week high of five and a 52-week low close to three. And our market capitalization is in around $72 million Canadian. Let me talk about our company, uh, our strategy. Uh, we've been in the information management business for 30 years. Uh, ProShred was one of the founders in the document destruction business. Um, as you can see here on our slideshow, we have a, a fleet of trucks here. Uh, we have over 200 trucks in the United States uh, shredding on the truck on site, uh, primarily for small, medium sized enterprise clients. Our job is to protect our customers' identities, uh, to secure their information, uh, and that's our core competency. Uh, and the largest business that we own is the ProShred business. And of course, we destroy paper, hard drives, product, anything that can safely run through our shredder. We're an industry-leading company. Uh, we're, we're an ISO certified company. We're a NAID AAA certified company, and NAID is our industry certification. We're also locally serviced, nationally operated, and you, you'll see in a moment, we're, we're across the country. We're in over 40 markets, east coast to west coast, north to south. Um, we're known for um, uh, our responsive, easy service to our clients. Uh, our, our service, we do not include fuel surcharges, delivery charges, insurance charges, any of those, any of those things. We make it easy for our clients to do business with us. We keep it transparent. We keep it simple. When we look at our, our three business lines, as noted, our, our largest business line is in the mobile shredding business, paper, predominantly paper, but also hard drive and product. We also have a, a, a information management digital imaging business where we scan documents. We help with document management, workflow automation, and, and data hosting. And we also have an e-waste business in that um, where we take old computers um, and uh, recycle and or refurbish for use. All of these businesses, not only are they in the information security space, but they're also environmentally friendly. And we were very proud of the fact that um, uh, everything we do uh, helps towards a greener world. And, and that's that's critical for, for our go forward uh, as, as citizens of the world. As you can see on this map, as previously noted, we're in 41 metro markets covering 25 states. Uh, the, the 170 trucks is now closer to, uh, is over 200 trucks. Uh, so we're very uh, thankful that, that we continue to grow on a same location basis. And we're a hybrid model. Uh, we have franchisees and corporate locations. We own and operate 15 corporate locations ourselves. And there are 15 franchisees out there uh, operating under the ProShred license in particular. So we have a three-pronged strategy. And, and number one is whatever we own, we want to build. And we want to build that through driving recurring revenue service. We call that scheduled revenue, uh, where we go to our customers and, and uh, show up every week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, whatever they require, whatever is good for them, whatever they need to make sure that their information is disposed of securely. And by providing that recurring service to those clients, our goal is to drive recurring, strong, durable EBITDA and cash flows. By having sticky clients uh, as such, then we can market to them event-based shredding, hard drive destruction, digital imaging, e-waste. So, so by owning something, we want to build it. We want to build it in a profitable manner. Accretive acquisitions. Um, you'll see shortly, uh, we've been uh, very acquisitive. Uh, we, we have been buying our franchisees when, when they're looking to retire. We've been buying independents. Uh, and we'll talk about that market in a moment. 
Um, and by doing that, we obviously are able to um, continue to grow it, find some back office um, uh, cost savings, uh, find route efficiencies. Our business is certainly one of route density. How can we have more stops on a route safely? That's our business. And of course, we must support our franchisees so they're successful. So when they do wish to exit, they have a win and we also have a good business that we're buying. So when we think um, execution, uh, we've, we've conducted $80 million in acquisitions uh, since 2018. Uh, so that's five years, uh, $80 million. We've bought our franchisees during that time. We've bought independents during that time. Uh, and we've grown our same location uh, service revenue. Uh, so it's in particular that recurring revenue stream. Uh, we have a, a run rate of uh, $57 million, including our most recent acquisition in, in Philadelphia, uh, which we purchased from a longstanding franchisee. We have a 25% consolidated EBITDA margin uh, and a 10-year uh, EBITDA CAGR of 80% plus. So we've executed on a business plan and we're going to continue to execute on this business plan. And it's really two-pronged. Number one, continue to buy our franchisees uh, as they wish to retire. There's another 33 million, and this is now in Canadian dollars, and the slide is in Canadian dollars. Uh, it's $33 million Canadian and about another $11 million in store level EBITDA with our franchisees. There's also 750 independents in the United States. The majority of them in markets that we operate in or are in adjacent markets. Uh, there's about $750 million in market share. Uh, and you can just imagine uh, doing the math. We, we purchase 5% of that market. Um, you know, that would equate to over $40 million in revenue. And um, even at a very conservative 25% EBIT, that would be $10 million in EBIT, if not more. So the beauty of, of what we have there is we've, if we continue to keep doing what we're doing, we're going to continue to grow our business, not only the top line, but critically the bottom line. So how have we done so far? Uh, so, uh, number one, we'll start here with system. The system uh, sales uh, is all revenue from all locations, uh, franchise or corporate. So, one of our goals is to drive same location shredding sales. And why shredding? Because we also make money by selling the paper to recyclers. When we shred the, the paper in your office, that paper at the end of the day is sold. And that's about, that equates to about 20% of our revenue. But we're really focused on what we control. So we set a target for 2022 to grow uh, our uh, spreading sales by 10% to 45 million US uh, to the third quarter of 2022, 19%. So we're exceeding target. If I expand down to growth, uh, our goal is to grow same location EBITDA from the corporate locations that we own and operate. The target was 8% to 13.4 million. And again, same location that doesn't include acquired. Uh, and uh, we've grown that 38%, uh, driven by new client acquisition, increasing paper prices, um, stronger efficiencies, uh, again, exceeding target. Go to the other side, uh, expansion. Uh, acquisitions that are accretive, smart acquisitions. And our goal was to uh, acquire between four and five million in revenue in 2022, up till the third quarter, end of third quarter, and even into November, because we're including the Philadelphia acquisition. $6 million in acquired revenue, again, exceeded target. And then leverage, improve as we grow, we want to uh, obtain operating leverage. So our GNA target was 12% uh, for the year. And so far in 2022, up to the end of the third quarter, 11%. So we're ahead of target there. Our team, our management team has done a great job of executing on the business plan, executing on our strategy and delivering results. So again, when I look at the third quarter of 2022, and for me as a CEO, um, you know, we always want to do better. But uh, when I look at these numbers, we had 3.6 million in EBITDA, up 27% from the prior year. 20 cents per share in EBITDA, 11% from the prior year. 33% same corporate location EBITDA growth, 38% better than the prior year. $3.3 million in cash from operations, 37% better than the prior year. And debt to total assets of 47%. We're deploying debt prudently. 
These are, uh, as a Canadian company, obviously we're following IFRS, the International Financial Reporting Standards. Uh, some of these are non-GAAP measures, uh, and we have a description here for your review of, of what, what these non-GAAP measures mean, as well as in our management discussion and analysis documents that we put out every quarter. So let's look at the consolidated EBITDA trend. Um, as noted in, in one of my comments earlier, I've been at this company 18 years, started with six locations. Um, I was um, given the privilege to become the CEO in 2011. And you can see the journey that we've been on, on from an EBITDA perspective up to the year, up to the third quarter end. We haven't even finished the year. Uh, we had 12.2 million in EBITDA, which completely blew away the 2021 total year EBITDA um, uh, of 9 million with much stronger EBITDA margins. Our fourth quarter is generally softer, uh, just as, a, as an FYI, because of um, the um, uh, seasonality that Thanksgiving and, and the Christmas spring in terms of the number of business days. For me, though, uh, I look at this and go, we're on track. We're doing well. Uh, how did we get here? Driver retention has been critical during the period of high wage inflation. Uh, we've been able to keep our drivers. We took proactive measures during COVID and, and, and in 2021 to put in um, uh, training programs, retention programs, focusing on route density. The beauty of our business is we can sell into buildings, sell into zip codes, creating route densities to enhance margins. And of course, continued acquisitions, both franchisees and independents. And we buy an independent in an existing market. Uh, we can then absorb their routes and place them onto our routes. And of course, that that naturally would provide a stronger profit margin per stop or per route. So when we look at that uh, third quarter, again, same location service revenue was up over a million dollars, recycling revenue up over a million dollars, same location costs were up 1.8 million, but obviously didn't grow at the same rates as, uh, uh, as, as our revenues. Uh, fuel has been the largest driver of cost uh, during uh, the second and third quarter of 2022 versus 2021. We all face that. Uh, during the fourth quarter, we put through a price increase to help alleviate that. Uh, our acquired EBITDA was up uh, almost three quarters of a million dollars and GNA up half a million. So uh, those all uh, came through for us and we were able to post uh, a pretty good year to date. Uh, so again, good good events. Paper prices uh, continued to be at historical highs. Um, good same location growth. Fuel costs are higher. Driver shortages did cause some wage inflation, but we managed that through retention. Uh, and of course, we all have heard about logistical challenges with truck parts and shortages. But we found our way through that as well. Uh, we have very good relationships with our vendors, truck vendors, and um, uh, we've been continuing to get supply. So that, how does that translate on the top line? I always start with the bottom line. The top line is we continue to have excellent, strong growth on the top line. Uh, 42 million on a year-to-date basis for the third quarter of 2022, already beat 2021. What is our strategy there? Number one, invest in sales. Uh, invest in salespeople, invest in marketing, invest in new trucks. Um, target small, medium-sized enterprise. They're an underserviced market, so we've been targeting them. Uh, go after recurring service, not event-based service continued acquisitions, of course. So, so our revenues have been well up year over year uh, and um, uh, we're, we're thrilled about that. Doesn't translate to the bottom line, then we're not happy. We've been fortunate that this has been translating to the bottom line and to the cash flow line. And I look at this quarter over quarter over quarter. When I look at same location service revenue, so excluding paper recycling, just service revenue on a same location basis, so not including acquisitions. The only time in the last 35 quarters that we had negative growth was the first quarter of the survey way back in 2014 and during COVID. COVID was down, but you can see here, we were fortunate. Um, we were down between um, the worst quarter we were down was about 20%. That was the first quarter of COVID. And then we were in and around 10 to 15% the next three. Um, the good news is we were an essential service. We were servicing other companies that were essential services. 
Small, medium-sized enterprise came back to work quickly. And you can see here, we've been putting up unbelievably strong double digit, same location service growth. Um, we are uh, very fortunate uh, as a business, um, very fortunate that our team really hunkered down and focused on the customer, took care of the customer, and uh, we did right by the customer. Um, um, when they need to turn off service, we turned off service. When they came back, we turned it back on and the results are uh, proof positive of that, that client first attitude. When I look at acquisitions, uh, again, uh, $80 million uh, here. And, um, you know, we finished uh, 2022 with $13 million in deals. Um, you can see here since 2018, we've been on a tear with acquisitions, buying franchisees, buying independents, uh, um, tucking them in. Uh, very strong uh, acquisition platform, a very strong acquisition team, very strong due diligence team. We do not do the most acquisitions in our industry, but when we do them, we like to do them well. We like to integrate them. We want to make sure they're accretive. We want to build what we buy. Operating leverage. Again, uh, this chart speaks for itself. Uh, as we have grown, we have seen uh, the um, GNA cost as a percentage of our revenue fall and continues to fall. And um, 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 Q4 is always the tougher one, but uh, but I, uh, you can see the trend has been very good. And, and how we've done that. Number one, centralized key back office functions when we buy things. Use technology. We've been deploying a new workflow technology, a new CRM. We're using Salesforce now. That's all being integrated so the systems talk to each other. Centralize as many tasks as we can that are logical. Uh, if it impacts the customer in a negative way, we're not going to centralize it. Um, but anything that needs customer service and attention is local. Anything we can centralize smartly, we'll centralize, and, and we've been successful. This chart, I won't get too much into this chart other than uh, it, it provides you uh, as a potential investor or a current investor uh, a good view of our business. Uh, we have had strong revenue growth strong EBITDA growth, strong EBITDA per share, that's critical. Um, one of the measures we have is operating income less interest, and that's less interest from truck uh, debt, acquisition debt. That number has grown in a, in a significant way, uh, again, as we obtain operating leverage even on those line items. The balance sheet's strong, the, the, um, uh, the, the debt levels are reasonable. So how do we continue that? organically grow, accretive acquisitions, proper leverage. That's how we're going to do it. Those are the three drivers. We also do a little bit of an EBITDA per share reconciliation. Uh, we did an equity raise in late 21. Uh, you can see here uh, the acquired EBITDA plus the organic growth has more than offset the, the dilutive impact of that raise. Uh, we are very, very mindful of dilution. Uh, our shareholders uh, need to know that uh, when we go to the equity markets, we do do so with a purpose. We don't just go to the equity markets because the times are good to raise equity. We go to the equity markets because there's a purpose for the dollars. And uh, that, that's that been critical uh, in our success. Acquisitions, just to talk about the two types of acquisitions. Um, there's really our franchisees. Our franchisees are well run. They follow our playbook strong scheduled revenue mix, meaning the recurring revenue, good modern trucks, strong EBITDA, the typical multiple range uh, as a multiple of EBITDA that we buy them for is between five and a six and a half multiple. Uh, that's been the typical range. Those form the hubs from which then we can go buy independents. Independents tend to be smaller, under a million dollars, tend to have less recurring revenue, tend to have fewer trucks. Uh, their EBITDA tends to be less as a percentage. And often we buy some of them of their poor uh, asset-based purchases, anywhere up to four multiple of EBITDA. But then we get to tuck those in. And by tucking those in, uh, we obtain uh, route density, uh, better route profitability, back office savings. So, so that's, that's the strategy that we have here. Again, let's build what we buy. Uh, let's find the opportunities to be smarter in how we do business. Um, and let's use technology to our advantage. Um, my contact details are here, as are our CFO's contact details. Um, 
who are thrilled and happy to take questions from our investors and potential investors. Um, I thank you all for taking a few moments with me today to uh, review our business. Uh, we're very excited about where we're going. Uh, we've uh, The management team here uh, has done excellent work, put their head down to work on the business, um, which allows me to then uh, go out and find the right acquisitions. Uh, and uh, we've been very successful there, but I, we don't do it without our our driver team, our customer service professionals, the team in the field, the management team, the support teams, uh, they've all made this possible and allow me to talk to you here today. So thank you for your time and uh, please contact us with questions.